Hasselblad 501 CM camera. This is the last of the classic 500 series cameras discontinued in about 2004-2005. What, what I'm going to do now is just talk through the features, uh, talk through the differences between this and the, um, and the older models. Okay, so 501 CM. The 501 CM was the last of the standard 500 series cameras. Um, the 501 CM replaced the 501 C, which in turn replaced the 500 CM. 500 CM was made through the 1980s and replaced in the late early 1980s the 501 C. The earliest 501 C had a very very similar to this design wise had a fixed screen. The newer 500 CM has an interchangeable screen. The newer 501C and this, the 501CM, had slightly more updated, um, slightly more updated looks. Not big differences. The 500, 501C had an updated screen called the Acute Mat, which is a, a brighter, better screen. The 501CM, this one, the last one, had an Acute Mat D screen, which was improved again. And this also had the Hasselblad gliding mirror system. Now the Hasselblad gliding mirror system was an updated mirror which meant when using uh, longer lenses, particularly the 150 and 250, with the newer system you'll see less vignetting in the viewfinder. With the older cameras if you're using the 150 you get a little bit of vignetting in the viewfinder, you get more vignetting with the 250. With the new gliding mirror system on the 501 CM cameras you don't get that at all. So if you are doing a lot of portraiture and you're, you're, you're using longer lenses, then you might be better off, better off looking at the, the 501 CM series cameras. Don't also forget that there are the 503 series cameras, 503CX, 503CXI, and 503CW. Those cameras have the TTL flash. So the 503 series cameras had TTL flash. The 500 series cameras were just basic mechanical cameras with no TTL flash facility. Okay, so let's just quickly look through, run through the features on this. Let's, let's start with the back. Generally speaking, if you're, if you're buying a 501 CM camera, you'll be getting the newer back. The newer back has, has this, big, this big dark slide holder on the back. So when you take the dark slide out, you can slide the dark slide holder into there. Um, to, to get the back off the camera, you just slide the little switch here to one side, obviously dark slide in, the little switch there slides to one side, all Hasselblad backs will fit on to, onto this camera. There's no issue with compatibility. You can use the older backs on this camera. Um, but if you're using the, or if you're buying the new 501 CM, you would expect it to come with a newer style back. So with a, with a back that's contemporaneous. To load the film, and just use this little key here to open the back itself. That opens, film loads in there. I'll put a link up above, which just uh, shows how to load a Hasselblad back. They're fairly straightforward. But it's worth just running a few test rolls through just to make sure you're familiar with, with the way that the, the back loading works. To get it back onto the camera, you just um, hinge on at the bottom here and it just locks on like that. On this side you have the film advance crank there. That's used to advance the film to the first frame in the back. Once the, once the back is on the camera, the main advance crank will cock the camera and advance the film. Just there, you've got a little uh, little um, frame counter. Moving on to the camera, let's look at the uh, let's look at the top. That's the waist level finder. That's the standard viewfinder. To use the viewfinder, you look down like this. Hold the camera at waist level. Hence the name. The waist level finder can be changed. You can put on prisms, 45 degree prisms which would hold up, up like this, 90 degree prisms which would hold high like this. My advice would be to try the waist level finder, see how you get on with the waist level finder. If you struggle with it, some people do, then uh, look at the prisms. But the camera works best with this basic configuration in most cases. If you take the back off, there, the viewfinder itself will slide off. The viewfinder then slides off and can be replaced. This bit's important. That's an acute matte D screen. That's the latest and brightest and most expensive Hasselblad screen. They come standard with the 501 CM cameras. You can put older screens in. They work without a problem. They're all, in, they're all interchangeable. But if you're buying this camera, make sure you get the newer Acute Matte D screen. To take the screen out, you just push these little levers here and here to one side, and the screen will fall into the palm of your hands. To put it back in, drop, drop it into position, 
slide the viewfinder back on. And as you slide the viewfinder back on, these two levers here and here will actually come back across and lock the screen into, into position. Moving on to this side here, I'll just quickly put the back on. Moving onto this side here, you have the film advance crank. Underneath there, you have the mirror lockup. So if you're using the camera on a tripod, obviously you always have to have the dark slide out, otherwise the camera won't take a picture. Wind it on, got it on a tripod, use the mirror pre-release, that locks the mirror up into the um, into the, the upper position, ready to take the picture. You can then use the shutter release button here to take the photograph. Less vibration, sharper pictures. To wind on, you just advance there. Looking at the front, shutter release, fairly obvious. Lens release on this side. To release the lens, you've got to have the lens, the camera cocked. So the camera has to be wound on. If you press the button and the camera is wound on, the lens will come straight off. To put the lens back on, you have to reverse the procedure. Make sure that the lens shutter is open so it's cocked, you can see straight through the lens. Sometimes when these are off the camera, they can, they can jolt and the, the, the shutter can trip, the shutter's in the lens, it can trip. So if you can't see through the lens, the shutter's closed. Not a problem. All you need to do is just get a screwdriver or a coin and carefully turn that little um, screw there. Um, more than 360 degrees, you've got to turn it quite a long way. As you get to the end, you'll see, you'll hear it click. Once it's clicked, the, shut, the, the, um, the shutter is locked open. And you'll also see at that point, the little groove that you're using to engage the coin or the screwdriver with has also lined a little red dot there. There's a little red arrow which shows you which way to turn this. So if the, the shutter is closed, just turn that to recock it. It's really straightforward. That's cocked, you can see through it. That's cocked the mirrors down, so you can now put them back on. The lens now goes back on the camera and engages like that, really straightforward. It's a leaf shutter lens, so you can sync with flash at all speeds. Shutter, uh, shutter dial there, aperture dial behind it, and that's, the, and that's the focusing. This is the CFE lens, which is the latest lens. Any C-series lens will fit this camera and work with this camera. They're completely interchangeable. But if you're buying a 501 CM, the newer camera, you should be expecting the newer lens as well. If it's got an older lens, that's not the end of the world. I'll put a link up to describe the differences, but don't pay top dollar if you're not getting the new lens. Also, obviously, don't pay top dollar if you're not getting the new viewfinder. Don't pay top dollar if you're not getting the newest back, and definitely don't pay top dollar if you're not getting the newest screen. It's amazing how often I'm offered these cameras as a dealer. I check them, and surprise, surprise, the expensive acute matte screen is gone, and it's got a, it got a cheap 1970s screen in its place. So always check that. Moving on to this side, this is all fairly straightforward. A little rail there, you can put a Hasbad accessory shoe on there to take to take flash guns, or you can uh, has to make a little accessory with a, with a spirit level, which is quite nice, which just slides on to give you a, a visible spirit level, which, which is nice. Looking at the bottom, 3 8 and quarter inch tripod mounting, which is handy. This shoe here, it couples with the Hasselblad tripod quick release. You can buy a Hasselblad uh, tripod plate, which the camera just slides into. It's a very solid, very nicely made piece of equipment. And again, if you're using the tripod on, on the camera on a tripod a lot, that's worth investing in. It's, 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 it's a good accessory. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now, if you're buying one of these things, make sure it's clean. Make sure it hasn't been abused. I'll put a link up that gives you some other buying advice. Um, they are very reliable. They are designed to be used and they're designed to be used professionally. But if you're buying one, don't forget it's 20 years old. And a camera that old has to be looked after. And it should also have been serviced. Hopefully you should find a serv service records with it as well. If they've not been serviced, not the end of the world, but just check them over much more carefully because they are mechanical and without regular servicing, you can have mechanical issues with them. But as I said, I'll put a link up which just describes what you need to check when buying these things secondhand. Most importantly, as I highlighted earlier, if you're buying the 501CM, the latest model, make sure you get the latest, the latest accessories with it as well. I hope that's useful. If you have any comments, please stick them in the comments box below. Otherwise, please subscribe and like, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.